Good morning, everybody. This article comes from Science 2.0, Join the Revolution. Simple ways to see Nibiru is totally nuts. And limits on planets hiding in our solar system. This is written by Robert Walker, and this came out March 24, 2016. In, in case you haven't heard of it, <laughs> Nibiru is a totally nuts idea. Well, he says it kindly. I say Nib <laughs> he says it very nicely. Yet, it gets many people very scared. I started to get the messages out about it as a result of writing articles about asteroid impacts and how we can detect and deflect asteroids. It is possible to have beliefs that don't make any sense if you look at them closely. For instance, if you believe that you can have a square with every point on its edges equally distant from its center in ordinary geometry, that's impossible. That's, that's a square circle. Nibiru is a belief of this sort. Yet there's another Nibiru scare underway, and it's been underway for, you know, many, many years. Every few months they predict that it is about to hit Earth or cause a cataclysm. I write these articles to help reassure those who are scared. It's for the same reason that David Morrison started publishing his answers to email questions about Nibiru and the Never a Straight Answer website. Brian Cox colorfully called Nibiru the imaginary bullshit planet. Uh, Neil de Asshole Tyson uh, called it a marvelous work of fiction by people who flunked physics at high school. We're ta he's talking about Sitchin, you guys, okay? Uh, as for being one of them, anyways. Anyways, oh, okay. their basic belief is that there is a planet in a 3,600 year orbit. They think it approached the sun hiding behind it all the time so we couldn't see it. <laughs> and then suddenly it's going to jump out and hit us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Common sense. If anyone says this to you, then, immediate, then they immediately destroy their credentials as an astronomer. Think about it. Can you see why it is impossible for a planet in a 3,600-year orbit to be hidden behind the sun for years on end as seen from a planet with a one-year orbit? <laughs> it's not hard to see. You don't need to know anything much to, uh, except to understand what it means for a planet to orbit the sun. Don't need to know Kepler's laws or anything like that. Uh, and in this video, the guy explained the concept for anyone reading this who hasn't yet learned their astronomy ABCs. All right. I will post the link in the description box below so you can watch this. Okay. Another idea they have is that a planet would be visible in the daytime sky next to the sun. And they post images and videos like this, and I will play this for you. So here I am out here in September, and as you can see, there's obviously a really very clear planet that is right north of the sun. And while I would love to say it was the moon, but since the moon happens to be right here on the opposite side, there's no way it is. And since we all have been taught in school that Mercury and Venus do not show up. Oh, just look at that planet just beaming and shining right now. Somebody tell me what it is. Thank you. <laughs> In this case, Melissa Huffman, who made that video, just asks what it is. She doesn't claim it is Nibiru but many other videos just like this are shared by people who just out and say it is Nibiru. 
Notice that she can zoom in and magnifies in place like a real object. Do you know what this is? I'll give the explanation soon, but meanwhile you might enjoy being pleasantly baffled. Anyway, whatever it is, it can't be a planet or a moon. This moon, uh, this shows the moon during a partial eclipse. Okay, photo by Typhoon Chaser. As you can see, the moon itself is completely invisible. It is not lit up by the sun because the sun is behind it. You can see how this works for yourself. If you just use a table lamp, hold an orange between it and yourself, and you will see the dark side of the orange. The moon is, is behind the clouds and behind scattered blue sky, and it is completely black against the black sky. If you were to look at it, say from space, so you don't expect to see it. So again, if someone thinks they can photograph a planet next to a, the sun fully illuminated and so close that it, is, that it is the same visible size as the sun, or indeed of any size at all, then you know they haven't yet learned their, ABC, their astronomy ABCs. It is no shame to have not learned this stuff. I haven't learned my football ABCs don't have a clue how the game works it just shows you it just shows you have never looked into the topic in any detail basically you know do your research on Nibiru it's 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 an internet hoax it's not real um, you, you gotta research this stuff yourself into detail uh, it just shows you on it just shows you have never looked into the topic in any detail not interested or somehow missed out on it. Unless you are a journalist, if you are about to publish a news story about Nibiru, do run it past an astronomer first. The only way something could be as close to the sun as this, and also visible in the sky, and as large as this, and show a full disk, is if it is a source of light itself, a second sun, or an absolutely huge sphere larger than the sun on the far side of the sun but surely nobody thinks that's credible okay it's easy to prove for yourself that we don't have a second sun is is this planet Nibiru for real Nibiru and other stories about wayward planets are an internet hoax there is no factual basis for these claims. There are no factual basis for these claims. None whatsoever. If Nibiru or Planet X were real and headed for an encounter with the Earth, astronomers would have been tracking it for at least the past decade, and it would now be visible to the naked eye. I'm going to highlight, and it would be visible by now to the naked eye. That's why I said in my previous videos, do you see it with your naked eyes when you go outside and you look up? Most likely not.